Hello and welcome to the Brand Therapist Podcast. I am your host, Jamilka Rodriguez, and I have a very special guest today. And so I'm going to be, well, I'm going to read her bio before we get started with the questions. So Sonia James Pennington is our guest today, an Esquire and highly creative arts and entertainment entrepreneur with 25 years of experience owning, operating, and managing for profit and nonprofit arts organizations while or, while successfully or, uh, utilizing her lengthy l- legal and business administration experience to create innovative platforms and opportunities, which is so exciting. In 2020, Sonia added director, producer, and filmmaker to her repertoire. With the premiere of her story in 12 bars and uh, a mixed media historical film created in likeness of Africa's S- ancestral grits or grits um, with a modern twist. And it's the journey from Africa to the present day through the unspoken stories of black women illuminated by music, poetry, spoken word, and dance. Each piece piece depicts an an era era of history history. that signifies, illustrates, and just a position of struggle and triumph told in a way that it has not been experienced by most, which I love, love, love that bio, and I can't wait to get to know you a little bit more. So, Sonia, tell us about what you do. What is um, what is your daily life like? What do I do? Um, <laughs> short list, um, <laughs> because it's quite long. So I manage several businesses, small businesses, um, primarily in the arts. Um, I own a and run and manage a dance competition, which is our 20th season this year. So it's so exciting. <laughs> Um, yeah, we are so blessed to say that we are still standing after 20 years, two decades. Um, I also manage um, our outdoor beer garden, which is family owned and run with my husband. Um, and I own That Which Connects, which is a nonprofit that primarily is a dance festival. But um, during the pandemic, we launched a, an additional project called Her Story in 12 Bars, which is an one hour length film, um, primarily dance and spoken word. Um, and we get to use that to do all kinds of training. Um, we've done it in schools. We've done it with professional groups. We've done trainings with um, all sorts of organization where we utilize the film to speak to self-identity and self-awareness. Um, also mm-hmm. diversity and inclusion, talking about stories and how your own personal story is rooted in your history, but it also brings forth a forward speaking story and what you add to the fabric of any organization or school or any place or space that you take up and that you have to take it up with the fullness of your story. So those were the three main things that I do. I'm also an attorney, so I do um, work with different clients in small business matters. I like to keep it um, with clients that I know that I'm helping personally to live out their vision and their dream um, and manage their small businesses, especially as an African-American woman. It's so difficult just to understand and to work through some of those challenges it is to run a business on your own. So, um, and then on top of that, I am a mom of two incredible um, young men, teenagers. So my life is full from sun up to sun down. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you, in your childhood, tell me a story about your childhood that kind of got you to where you are today. Story about my childhood. I used to play with Barbies. I absolutely love them. And um, my parents indulged. And so I had, I had, I had a Barbie land um, from houses to cars to buses. And I used to spend hours in my basement, um, not only just playing with them, but like establishing their lives. <laughs> and I, like super creative. I was all in to the point where it actually... Once I left my Barbie world, it would transfer into my outside world 
where different houses in my neighborhood would be, you know, this style's house. Like I would connect the worlds, the Barbie world with the real life world. And I did this forever. And I just, even as I got older and it was less play, it really was a way for me to continuously create. And I realize now that that was like my birthplace for creativity and, um, birthing thing. Like I always say like, I am a super, I love to create things. I love to take nothing and see it manifest into something like, and I think that's where I get the strong pull for being a choreographer and an artist is that it's just, it's just astounding and touches my heart that I can literally pull something out of my mind and my spirit and then pow, it's like on a stage or it's just, it's just here and it's there. And I, you know, so I would say that would be one of, one of the most pivotal things in my childhood is how much I played and how much I created in my mind. And it was beyond just play. It became like my entire world. And I even did that with playing school and dress up and my girlfriend, and I used to create radio and TV shows and I was always creating something. I had you do a test and I don't, you know, you, you, you obviously came up as a very, I was, when I read your bio and I looked at your card, which I have right here, I was like, okay, this totally makes sense. And it's always on par. So I'm going to read it to you. Okay. And then you're going to define some of the words in the back for it. So it says, uh, you're a performer. And a performer sees the world as a party and is attracted to experiences that help them live in the moment and enjoy life. The motivation is happiness. The need is to live in the moment. The fear is being bored. And the behaviors are helps others have a great time, lightens up the world, and enjoys life. How does that sound? I, I think that's pretty on point. I do. <laughs> I really do. I love it when it is. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a few of these words and I want you to define them on how Sonia James Pennington would define them. So fun loving. Fun loving. Um, Bringing a spark to any situation. You know, tapping into other people and my own sense of joy. Um, and yes, not playful, playful. Um, not taking anything too seriously, finding the bright side of a lot of things, joking and laughing and being just a light spirit. Love it. Joyous. Yeah. Joyous, full of life and energy, um, being a safe place for people to let go. Um, kindness, um, creativity. Just just a really sense of um, pulling out the best in people and myself. Lighthearted. Not taking myself or, or the world too seriously. Um, and when I do, attempting to always snap out of it and find the brighter side and being grounded in that and knowing that there's always a brighter tomorrow. And, and there's, always, there's always a flip side. There's always a flip side. Not getting stuck. Um, yeah. Witty. Witty. Mm. Um, a quick comeback. Um, uh, again, not taking anything too seriously, being able to poke and jab at people, um, letting go of ego, <laughs> um, able to laugh at yourself and laugh at situations instead of crying. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so let me ask you this. What is your greatest fear in all of that? Oh, wow. My greatest fear is to stand still and to not impact, um, to not feel a sense of purpose, uh, spiritually to not be connected to God and not to be walking in my purpose. Um, to not be changing the environments that I'm in in a positive way uh, and not to be not and not encouraging and and living a life that um, encourages others to be themselves and um, not having joy kind of, you know just living a very mundane dark boring life that's like my one of my largest fears is not living up to what has been purposed 
to the magnitude that it's been purposed in me. So what would you say your brand is all about? My brand is brand. my personal brand. My personal brand. That's a good question. Um, I think encourager. I think bring a bright, being a bright light in most or all situations. Um, connecting with people in a very deep way, impacting them, leaving a presence or a mark making them smile, um, inspiring, um, and doing it differently. Being different and seeing that you can live differently and outside of the box and that success can be found in that. And always like my own drummer's beat, like encouraging people to find that different, unique sense of themselves and myself and putting it on display in such a way that it encourages or inspires someone, but it's a genuine way, not not for the outside world or for someone else's um, mark of success or, or that, but it truly is genuinely who I am and from the inside. So I think that definitely is that there's a sense of genuine, grounded, like this is who I am, this is how I show up, um, this is real, this is not something that I put on um, and just being a beautiful spirit, like connecting with people and making an impact in a good way with them. Uh, so let me ask you this. A lot of us, you know, have guides, mentors, people that kind of have helped us along the way. Can you tell us a story of some, a mentor or a guide that kind of helped you along the way um, when you were maybe having a difficult time or trying to get through some things in your personal life or in your business life? Um, honestly, there's, there's, there's a lot. Um, I tend to pull in, in those situations. Um, but I think most recently I have a beautiful group of, um, friends that we have drawn together within the last four years that are consistently pouring into my spirit. And it's not always things that they say directly, but things that they say or do indirectly that affect me or encourage me to, um, to want to be different and want to be better um, and to look at the world better and wider. Um, I would also say my husband, um, he is such an incredible innovator um, he's a visionary and that has allowed me to tap into thinking bigger, not being a safe, um, jumping out and just doing things sometimes and not overthinking them or, or waiting for the perfect situation. Um, it's also allowed me to tap into areas that I'm uncomfortable with or have not have experience with, but just to do it because it's sometimes it's just required. Um, grace also just a lot of forgiveness and grace and seeing the best in each other um, and pulling that out. And I think also another pivotal people are my mom and my dad, uh, my mom, her fortitude. She's such a strong woman of faith. So she's given me that through prayer um, she's also one of my strongest critics, but with a loving touch, but it's always out of wanting, seeing so much in me that she wants to pull out more. Um, and sometimes it's hard to receive because I feel like it's a critical space, but as I get older, I see it's that she actually sees so much and she's so excited for me to keep growing that she always wants to add to it. Um, I think my father, um, He's just wise. Um, he always brings things back to the most simplest form and giving insight in that way. Um, I tend to be emotional and he kind of cuts through that. Um, and then I last but not least, I'd say would be my sister who um, she's brilliant and she's so creative and she too has created a world that's outside of the norm 
but she does it in such her own way. And I admire that so much. Like she takes up space in ways that I don't, and I'm learning to, um, but she really is like bigger than life personality. Mm-hmm. And so I, I just admire her brilliance and I admire the way she does it in such a unique and authentic way that it's not a put on and she loves what she does and she, you know, and she embodies all of that. And so, and she's a great confidant. Um, we've t- cried tears together. We've celebrated together. We did the film together, which was huge. And it really was a moment of pulling our, our strengths together, uh, trusting wow. each other and um, just connecting in a way we, we hadn't even as sisters. You know, as you, as you talk, I can totally see your performer side, your entertainer side, you know, your producer side. Um, how do you manage to combine that with your law side of things? Like how, how do those two worlds come together? So it's funny. I think that I've always been, when they say both sides of the brain. So I'm very analytical um, and down to earth. But as I said, there's a dreamer side of me. My imagination is strong. Um, So even when I went to law school and even when I worked for the state as a deputy attorney general and I practiced, I lived a duality. So I would, nine to five, I would work for the state and I would do civil insurance fraud and litigator and all that. I called it my suit life. I'd have my suit life. But then from 5 to 10, 11 o'clock at night, most nights, I would be in the studio and I'd be teaching and choreographing. And so I've always lived this very, as I said, duality. Like I think on both sides of my brain. Um, And so it's an easy fit. So for and I and I and I think with my heart. So I'm a very passionate, compassionate person, um, empathetic person. So law fits in a way that I use it as a as a um, more of a vehicle than an end or a goal. It's just like almost like another skill that I can use to process situations and even think out um, how to implement, you know, plans or dreams rather than the end goal. And so that's kind of how I balance it. It's more of something in my toolkit that I can pull out Um that I can switch to when, when the situations call for it. I think it is a, it has trained my brain to think in ways um, that helps me not only just be an artist, but really be um, an arts entrepreneur. So I'm not always thinking just about creating in a sense of just a sense of creating, but, or producing, but in a way that how do I want it to move forward? Where where do I want it to be? Who do I want it to impact? Um, of course, how can it generate income? <laughs> um, I, you know, that's always the case as well. But I think that's what has made me successful in the arts entrepreneur sector, not just being a creator, but literally taking my love and passion for the arts and being able to build businesses around it that then again turns around and impacts the arts and individuals in that way. Um so I don't know. It's a natural fit for me because the way my brain works, um, it doesn't feel foreign at all. I, as long as I don't go too far into it, you know. Like I, I, I know where my space it's in law is and lies, and I stay I, I in that because I, I think Sonia that's anymore. best served um, in that way. What are your lessons learned? Tell me two or three lessons learned that you've had over your lifetime or recently, whichever one comes to mind. Okay. Lessons learned. Um, I think the first one would be to think big. Um, Don't minimize where you can go because of where you are right now. Um, Realize that growth happens in many different speeds and many different ways. Um, And that you really don't realize how much you've grown 
until you can look back at it. And sometimes in, in your current space, you feel that you may be stagnant or in the same space. But once you stop and really reflect on how far you've come, um, you have to give yourself that applause and, and, and not be so hard on yourself. Um, also hugely is giving yourself grace um, to make mistakes um, for things to not always turn out the way you think they should or expect they should. Um, right. You know, I think, I think, so, um, so. You know, yeah. I love I love that because you're you're totally right. Like a, a lot of times, I'm I'm with that even with myself at times. You know, I, I I if you look back and see all the accomplishments, you should be so proud of yourself. But you're always like striving for the next thing. What's the yeah. next? And yeah. how can I get better? And how instead of like uh, slowing down and kind of thinking, hey, you know, I've done all this. Look at it. Right. Like I should give myself a, a pat in the back and. And, uh, and celebrate, you know, a lot of times yeah. we, we don't do those things. We're just so hard on ourselves and wanting to achieve the next thing and go to the next thing and strive the next goal. So with that, where do you see yourself in the next five, 10 years? It's interesting. I am at this space and place where part of me wants to slow down and do it differently. Um, I've been on the grind, I feel like for a very long time. And as you, like you just mentioned, like, you're always like, what's next? What's next? What's next? Um, I'm getting to the point where I don't really know if I want it, what's next, but I'd like to like almost calm down and be at peace of where I am. Um, I've been in this, this space for the last few months of just being open to receive what's next rather than thinking overthinking and planning and chasing after the what's next I'm kind of tired of the chasing and I kind of want things to come what they should whatever's supposed to come being open to receive it again like I said it may not even look the way that I think Mm -hmm. it should or I dreamt it should or I'm kind of getting off that train that full steam ahead train like in two years I want this and then four years this and like I I'm, I'm nearing 50. <laughs> um, and I say that proudly because I know some people are like, oh, you don't tell your age. But I, almost, I feel like it's a badge of, mm-hmm. of honoring honor to say that, um, that in two short years, I'll be half a decade, God willing. And um, I feel I have accomplished a lot of things and I have success in the things that I really have worked hard at and put my heart into. Um, and I am now at the point where I would like to enjoy those things and not be at such a crazy fast pace of seeking, but almost just settling into at peace with where I am, what I have and those things that come, come, um, but almost just enjoying the, the small steps of, um, changes and shifts that will be huge in my personal life, um, with my kids getting older and just, you know, changing that life's that area aspect of my life. Um, I still know I have a lot of creative things that I would like to do, but I think I would like to do them a lot more purposed. Um, not so intentional about where it's going to take me, but rather experiencing it right in the moment, what it makes me feel like in this moment. Um, and not necessarily what's next or what door is going to open because of it. Thank you so much for your answer. You know, it felt like a true brand therapy session with your innermost thoughts and emotions and intuition and everything that you, uh, like you said, you do have this right brain, left brain coming together. And um, I could really feel your energy coming through. So how can we get a hold of you if we want to know more about what you do? Um, how can we get a hold of Sonia James Pennington? Where do you like to to kind of uh, spend your time? What social media places do you do you like the most? Um, my I'm on Instagram. Um, Sonia James, no Sonia Pennington. Uh, Sonia Pennington one, 
Um, I'm also, my company, That Which Connects, um, is also on Instagram, That Which Connects. Camden is actually the full handle. Um, and then also, you can get information on our website at thatwhichconnectscamden.com. Um, I do a lot of Instagram and posting, and then actually also our, my other company, National Dance Showcase. Um, you can also find out information about the different projects I'm working on and um, through those three main mediums. Well, thank you so much, Shania James, for being with us today. It was so great talking to you and hearing uh, all your endeavors and what you're striving for and how you're helping people and how you're really going in within you to be able to answer those questions that some of us um, have um, in our in our life. And so with that, thank you, everybody, for listening to the Brand Therapist podcast. And I will see you on the next one. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.